Hello, hello, and buongiorno, amici. I'm Peter, and here I'm telling you stories about the most interesting European cars of the 80s and 90s. Today we are talking about a car whose name was greatly inspired by the most famous and, according to William Shakespeare, the saddest love story of all times, Romeo and Juliet. And the car we are speaking about is Alfa Romeo Giulietta, produced from 1977 to 1985. And its glorious story wasn't sad at all. It was the second Alfa Romeo car named Giulietta. The first one, a very nice one, was made from 1954 to 65. And Alfa used this name once again in 2010 for a car produced up to 2020. But these three cars are absolutely not related to each other except for the name. So don't be confused. The one I'm telling you about today is known as Giulietta 1977 or Giulietta Tipa 116, according to its internal project name. The design was completely new, but mechanically the car was based on the Alfa Romeo Alfetta chassis. All Giuliettas were made only in four-door sedan body, but there were several station wagon aftermarket conversions made. In general, the appearance of the car looked standard for a mid-sized European sedan of the 80s, but the design of this car was born actually in the middle of the 70s, and we can say with confidence that this car was one of those who decided the main trends of automotive design for the whole next decade. The Giulietta had two facelifts in 1981 and in 1983, but they didn't change the look of the car dramatically. Just some light updates. From the technical point of view, the Giulietta wasn't something incredible or super fast, but it was very fun to drive because of the perfectly balanced suspension and steering. It never had power steering, but it never needed one. The steering in this car was always sharp, very responsive and easy. All Giuliettas were made with 5-speed manual transmissions only. The gearbox was moved to the back and combined with the rear axle in one body of transaxle, the same for Alfa Romeo Alfetta. This gave the car the perfect weight distribution between front and rear parts and therefore the perfect handling, particularly in corners. At the same time, I can't say that the engines available for Giulietta were very thrilling, but for that time they were not bad. At the start, only two four-cylinder engines were available, a 1.3 liter with the 94 horsepower and 1.6 with the 107 horsepower. Two years later, a 1.8 liter engine was added with 120 horsepower. And the year later, in May of 1980, Alfa Romeo started production of Giulietta Super with a 2 liter engine making 128 poor horses and 178 newton meters or 131 foot pounds of torque. These cars could make 0 to 60 miles per hour in 9.4 seconds, and the maximum speed was 185 kilometers per hour or 115 miles per hour. Not that impressive now, but more than competitive in the early 80s. And actually, this is the version you should probably look for if you'd like to buy the Giulietta 116. But there was also an ultimate performance version of Giulietta, made by Alta Delta, a racing department of Alfa Romeo. By the way, it was the last car of Alta Delta, before Alfa Romeo merged with Fiat and Alta Delta was decommissioned in favor of Fiat's racing division Abarth. So the turbocharged 2-liter Giulietta Turbo Alta Delta, also known as Turbo Delta, was introduced in 1982. The turbocharger, coupled with two double-barrel carburetors, increased the power of the engine up to 170 horsepower and the torque up to 283 newton meters or 209 foot-pounds. The top speed was 206 km per hour or 128 miles per hour, with 0 to 60 miles per hour in 7.5 seconds. It is a very rare version of Giulietta because only 361 of them were produced, all of them painted black with red interior. Because of the small production numbers and the current age of the cars, it is difficult to find and buy one of them now. But we probably can help you if you are really interested because we have very strong connections in Italy. All versions of Giulietta had some bizarre decision in the interior design. Say the tachometer with a narrow going counterclockwise, while the speedometer zero went clockwise. It is a distinctive feature, but I'm not sure that it was very easy to read. Also the design of the whole dashboard with an instrumental cluster like floating above it. The glove box that opened not downside, but right to you as a drawer of your office desk. 
And let's say you'd like to open your window. Where are you expecting to see the button for it? At the door handle? No. On the dashboard? No. Maybe on the center console between the seats? No again. They put the buttons on the ceiling, right above your head. A strange decision, but distinctive. And don't forget about rather weird headlight wipers. But they are somewhat cute in my opinion. The driving experience of Giulietta was a reflection of the Italian soul. You don't want to drive it nice and slow, because it is very boring. The real fun starts above 3000 RPM, and there Giulietta becomes a real Italian girl. Loud, a little hysterical, but hot-blooded, extremely passionate, hot, beautiful, sexy, and perfectly dancing. No wonder that this energy attracted those who needed fast cars by the nature of their profession. And no, I don't mean racing drivers. I'm speaking about the police. And in case of Italy, also about Carabinieri, the Italian National Police. They traditionally used and still use Alfa Romeo cars. And Giulietta was not an exception. I grew up in Europe, and as a child of the 80s, I watched a lot of Italian detective movies, like La Piovra, meaning the octopus, about the police commissioner Carrada Catani, played by Michele Placida, fighting Sicilian mafia Cosa Nostra. That actually was the first time when I got to know about the existence of Alfa Romeo cars, and now I understand that most of them were actually Giulietta's. So I feel some kind of a personal connection between this car and my childhood memories. In fact, Giulietta was a great car of its era. But everything comes to its end, and after 380,000 Giuliettas were built in total, it was replaced by Alfa Romeo 75 in 1985. Now the most common Giuliettas available in the market are with the 1.6 liter engines. But it is possible to find a good 2 liter version and even Turbo Delta, but Turbo Delta is significantly more expensive. I haven't found any info about importing Giuliettas into the United States. I know that Alfa exported some of them to South Africa, but I don't know about the United States. If you have this info, I appreciate you telling me this in the comments. But you still can buy Giulietta in Europe and legally import it to the United States, because all of them are older than 25 years now. It's absolutely not difficult with professional help and not that expensive. Most of them are in Italy, so in most cases you don't need to worry about the rest. But the prices are surprisingly high. Most common 1.6 liter versions and not that common but available interesting 2 liter versions are both listed about 7 to 15 thousand euros in Europe, depending on the condition of the car. But most of them are in Italy and considering the national specifics, I assume that the price may be very negotiable. The very rare and very desirable Turbo Delta versions are listed for 45 to 55,000 euros in good condition with relatively low mileage. Again, I recommend to consider this price only as a starting point for negotiations. Of course, there may be a lot of much better offers if you have good connections in the European car enthusiast community. And by the way, I can help you with this. We can help you to find a car, ship it to the United States and help you to import it properly and to deal with all legal paperwork. We have a network of partners in Europe who can find cars that are not listed on the internet, inspect them properly and organize shipping and everything else. This is not only for Giulietta, of course. We can find virtually any 80s, 90s or 70s car in Europe for you and bring it to the United States. And if you are watching this video from any other country, we can find a cool American car for you in the United States and ship it to your country. The link to our website with all details is in the description below. Well, thank you very much for watching. So, do you like Alfa Romeo or Giulietta? Or maybe you were happy to drive one or even own it? Tell me please in the comments below. And if you like this video, please give me thumbs up and subscribe. Grazie mille amici. And see you next time.